Hey, how's it going? It's Al here. Hope you are great. Now, today's little video is about this tiny little thing. Um, honest, it's small. <laughs> it's called a GMK Tech, and it's a Nutbox G3. And uh, having a look at how small this is, it's hard to believe that anything's inside. But as you can see right there, we've got a 512 gig NVMe, and we've got a 16 gig SODIMM right there. And this thing costs 199 US dollars. An incredible, pretty cheap purchase. What do you actually get inside this little guy? Windows 11 Pro comes free and pre-installed in this, which is, yeah, which is wild. And you might be thinking, oh my God, something this cheap, something this small, the performance is gonna be absolutely crap. Well, from how I've used it so far, uh, the performance seems absolutely fine. Like I'm really not having any struggles to use its performance. Anyway, inside the box comes a little manual, which these days is quite strange. On the, the front of the unit, we have two USB 3.2 jacks. And on, we, on the back, if we whip it around there, we have two HDMI, uh, 4K at 60 Hertz, so you can run two displays off it. We've also got a further two USB 3.2 um, sitting there beside the Ethernet port, which is a 2.5 gig Ethernet port. It comes with a separate power adapter, and the power adapter will work with um, USA, uh, Chinese, and also if you order at the checkout, at no extra cost, you will get a uh, adapter for going to um, other plugs. Like for me, I'm in New Zealand, so I got an adapter for Australia and New Zealand plugs. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, provides everything you want in a pretty small package in a pretty um, inexpensive box. And I'm just trying to think about who this wouldn't be for. It wouldn't be for gamers, for example. Um, the main reason before that is obviously the CPU is never going to perform to the levels of your, your maybe your um, your latest uh, Core i7s or i9s, and this the the GPU itself is a onboard obviously uh, Intel UHD graphics up to 750 megahertz. The CPU itself is a 12th gen Alder Lake N100. Um, that's seven nanometer. So uh, again, that's uh, that's pretty solid performance from this sort of size of thing. The max performance is 3.4 gigahertz. Um, and the, the order you can actually get it for cheaper, I think for uh, with eight gigs of RAM and uh, the maximum capacity, I think as I showed you just a moment ago, uh, the maximum capacity is about 32 gig of RAM because you can open it up and stick another slot in. Let me just try and open this again. <laughs> uh, you see that I'm not using a tool to open it. I'm literally prizing the top off with my nails and I bite my nails. Yeah, no, gross. Uh, you can see that space in the middle there. If I hold it up properly, there we go. Thanks, Focus. You can see here, there's another space for uh, sodium. Around the outside, around the outside, we have um, two wireless uh, antennas. So that's Wi-Fi 6, none of your Wi-Fi 5 business, um, which makes the wireless performance pretty good. I've done a few benchmarks with it myself and found the uh, performance of the, um, the Wi-Fi to be more than acceptable. Certainly is up there with my Mac G, um, my Mac M2 CPU machine. So, you know, perfectly good. You get it in a nice box as well. And uh, yeah, everything looks good about it. So um, what's it like on Geekbench? I think that's what you're gonna be asking next. And before I go any further, just let you know, this video is not sponsored at all by GMK Tech. I bought this with my own money. And uh, basically the purpose of why I wanted to use it was so that I could try and install Kali Linux on it and try and use this as a little dev box. Perfect for that sort of stuff. And so far, it seems to be working out. I've um, managed to get the BIOS to read the USB stick. And I was having some problems with the, getting the USB keyboard to work for some reason in legacy mode, uh, although the BIOS was set for legacy mode. Um, but I, I ended up just putting the keyboard in the rear of the unit 
this side and it uh, is just worked. So it's a weird thing, but um, obviously not a broken thing. It's just maybe the, the way that um, Grub reads keyboards. So yeah, I, uh, I've, I've got to finish the installation of Linux on this, but I've been playing a bit with Windows 11. It's been snappy, responsive, everything I want um, so far out of a, a small inexpensive desktop machine. So um, let's have a little bit more of a look at those Geekbench scores. So here's those all important Geekbench scores. And as you can see, it's uh, got itself up to 871 on the single core and then 2,428 on the multi-core. And it's uh, given us a GPU score of 3216. Now, what do those scores mean? Well, if you wanted to compare them with the absolute blistering top of the line Intel Core i9-1300KS, for example, then you'd be sorely disappointed. Uh, the single core itself whops in at 3103, and then if you go into the multi-core, it's 21830. So that's, you know, miles and miles and miles ahead in terms of performance on the CPU. But it only takes you a little while back to start looking at more reasonable scores. I mean, if we go back to, say, the i9-9900X, which is a 3.5 gigahertz 10 core machine, that is a score of 1488. And then when you start thinking about it that way, it's, uh, it's not like, it's, it's still a bit off, you know, it's not, but it's not like miles away. We're doing 871 versus 1488 here. So you can start to appreciate that the performance of this machine is not like terribly bad for the amount of money that you pay. And if we look at something, let's go down to compare this. And if I go down into Geekbench and I look for 871, well, the closest score I've got there is a uh, i7, Intel Core i7, 5500U, and that is 873. So basically what we're saying is that this is a similar in terms of um, configuration of a two core machine uh, from, from an i7, um, from you know a few years ago but not like forever ago um, and one day that that process was considered top of the line so really is quite interesting how uh, the performance of something that was top of the line would have cost you I don't know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars just for the CPU is now giving us performance in that regard for $199 for an entire machine you know so really cool to see that sort of um, information, that sort of benchmark in something as cheap as that. So will this become a daily driver for me? Probably not. But will it become a useful dev box, which has plenty of performance for what I do? Absolutely. Will I be playing games on it? Well, I could probably play some games quite just fine. So there you go. Useful for some things. If you do, all you do all day is Excel spreadsheets and Word documents, a bit of email and web browsing, it's probably good enough, which is just crazy. So there you go. I hope you've liked my review of this little GMK nut box. If you like this video, then check out some of my other videos on the channel. Got lots and lots of different stuff. I mainly do retro, but I, every now and again I do game reviews and I also do gadget reviews and stuff like that. If you really like what I do, then why don't you head on over to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Al's Geek Lab. And just like all these other lovely people, you'll get your name in the credits of the video. But not only that, you'll get to see every single video way before it's released. And there's also some extra stuff which you will get specially um, because you're a member on Patreon. So there you go. That's my video. That's my little review of the GMK Tech. I hope you liked it and uh, leave me a comment below. I've now recently uh, got to myself to 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube, so I'm really pumped about that. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, then please press that subscribe button, click on that notification bell and set it to all. And uh, yeah, comment below. Let me know what you thought of the video. Until next time, take care and I'll see you soon.